Hi guys, this is your video explanation for linear theory number nine. And really there's a lot of review in this video, but I also think that it ties together uh, several of the past lessons in your linear theories so that you are able to very uh, efficiently identify intervals. And that's really what this is all about, is being able to identify intervals. So you've had lessons on perfect intervals, you've had it lessons on uh, how, how we look at major and minor intervals, as well as diminished and augmented, and hopefully this ties things together. And really, what I want you to know uh, going into this lesson are the following three important ideas. First of all, I want you to have a good feel for the order of operations when identifying intervals. We'll get to that very quickly. I want you to understand how the major scale is the foundation for all interval identification. And then finally, I want you to really know the formulas. Once you know the intervals that grow from the major scale, how you can get to all other intervals. If you have these three things really locked in, this whole process of identifying intervals will be uh, really kind of simple. So first of all, let's talk about the order of operations. When identifying intervals, we're looking at two different things. We're looking at the interval name, that is, is it a second, is it a third, is it a sixth, is it a fifth? And then we're looking at the interval quality. And the quality would be major, minor, perfect, diminished, or augmented. We always want to identify the interval first, that is, First, identify, is it a fourth, is it a fifth, etc. After that is done, then you can go on to identifying the quality. If you flip this order over, just like in mathematics, you will get the wrong answer. If you start looking at quality first or start counting half steps before you've determined what the interval is, you will run into trouble. And the reason for that is certain intervals Two different intervals can have the same number of half steps. So we have to get to the interval first and then the quality second. We'll, we'll do that in a demonstration in a minute. So number one, know the order of operations. Number two, you need to remember that all of the major and perfect intervals grow from the major scale. If you know this, then you don't have to memorize stuff. It just gets really kind of simple. So let's just take a quick look at what we're dealing with here. A major second, oh, and let's re review the major scale. We know that a major scale is whole step, whole step, half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. That should be review. Everybody knows that. But now let's took it, take a look at the major second. The major second is determined by the distance from the first step of the scale to the second step of the major scale. That's a major, major second. It's a whole step or two semitones. So we know that a major second is two semitones because of the major scale. A major third is the distance from the first to the third uh, degree of the major scale. Well, whole step, whole step, four semitones. A perfect fourth grows from the major scale from one to four. Whole step, whole step, half step, or two plus two plus five, or plus one equals five semitones, and so on. Perfect fifth is from one to five. Two plus two plus one plus two, or seven. Major sixth, two plus two plus one plus two plus two, gives us nine. The major seventh, and finally the perfect eight octave, which gives us these numbers in such a way that you really don't need to memorize the number of semitones for majors and perfects. You can always come back to this major scale and be able to find it. So it's vital that you know that the major and perfect intervals all grow from the major scale and its patterns. If you know that, you're ready to move on to the next thing. Okay. The third thing that we need to know are the formulas for finding all of the 
other intervals in major and all of the other intervals in minor. So, and we've already said we know how to find the major intervals and the perfect intervals, but from there we can know that major minus 1 gives us a minor interval, major minus 2 gives us a diminished interval, and major plus 1 gives us an augmented interval. For dealing with perfect intervals, perfect minus 1 gives us a diminished interval, and perfect plus 1 gives us an augmented interval. If you know those formulas, and I would recommend memorizing those formulas, I would actually write those down at the top of your worksheet, and it makes things really pretty easy. Okay? So, these are the things we need to know. We need to know the order of operations. First we identify the interval, then we identify the quality. We need to know that all major and perfect intervals grow from the major scale, and we need to know these two formulas. With that in mind then, we can get to our homework and we can begin seeing how this all works. Um, so I, I want to say one other thing though as we're looking at this particular page of the worksheet. To me, identifying the intervals can be the, the quickest thing. And so let's just take a look at each type of interval from a second all the way to an octave. A second, we can see a second very quickly because the two notes are on an adjacent line and space. So I would recommend walking through this worksheet and put a two on the line for every second that you see. Real quickly, I see a second here, I see a second here, I see a second here. Because again, remember, in the order of operations, we're identifying the interval first. Okay. Where are the thirds? Can you find a third? Well, this first example is a third. It's two adjacent spaces. And another example of a third would be two adjacent lines. So this is a third, this is a third, and there are some others in there as well. A fourth. Well, let's look through and see if we can find a fourth. Here's a fourth. We can see it visually. It's just one degree wider than the thirds were. So if this is a fourth, can we find another fourth in there very quickly? I can identify one right here. I'm sure you can find more. A fifth. Fifths are always going to look like this, where there's a skipped line between the two notes on the line. And let's see if we have a fifth on spaces in here. A quick scan, and I'm not seeing one. Uh, but we could have something very similarly on two spaces with a space in between. So this is a fifth. A sixth. On a quick scan, I see a sixth here. And a seventh, see one right there. Finally, an octave, one right there. So this is a quick little demonstration of how fast it is to really identify the interval, the first step of the order of operations. Now once we've done that, now we want to go back and we want to count half steps. So let's take a look back at number one. Here we have an A to a C sharp. So let's go to a keyboard. Here's our A. We're going to count the half steps to C sharp. One, two, three, four. It's four half steps from A to C sharp. We know we've got some kind of third going here. So let's go back here. Our major third is four semitones, or four half steps. And I believe we said one, two, three, four here. 
So as a result, we know that the first example is a major third. Let's do one more for uh, good measure. Let's come over here to the fourth, okay? We know we've got some kind of a fourth when we're looking at a D to a G sharp, okay? So let's remind ourselves that a perfect fourth is five semitones. So, D is here, and we're going to G sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's six semitones from the D to the G sharp. We go to our formula. It's one more. Perfect plus one is augmented. And we can jump over here and know that we've got an augmented fourth. We can put a plus there for augmented. Okay? For an augmented interval, we can do it that way. For a diminished interval, we can do it that way. You don't need to write it out. For major, I recommend writing a really clearly a capital M for minor a lowercase m, and that gets us all the information that we need, okay? Then finally, if we come over here and we look at the second page of the worksheet, we do the same thing, but now we're finding the, the notes. So for the first example here, for a minor seventh, the first thing we would do is create the seventh. Well, that's fairly easy to do. We can find that note. This is kind of small for me to do here with, with my... Thing, but we know we're going from a D to a C here, okay? And we want this to be a minor seventh. And we know, whoops, let's get there, that a major seventh is 11 semitones. So a minor seventh would be 11 minus 1 or 10 semitones. So. We're starting on a D here, and we're going 10 semitones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it looks to me like it's a C natural. So we go back to our worksheet and we can leave that exactly as it is. That's our minor seventh. Okay? I hope this process makes sense. If you use it as I've described it, you will be uh, really in great shape and it will um, not take you a ton of time. Uh, but make sure that you know these three things and you'll be good to go. The order of operations, intervals first, quality second. Make sure you know how everything grows from the major scale and those formulas. I would write them down and then there's no problem at all. Good luck. I hope this goes really smoothly for you.